I don't valet park my car. I, I, I did once. Uh, I was probably 18 or 19 at the time, and I was hired by uh, some people to come and take uh, photos at their, what you call it, a New Year's Eve party. And I got there, and they had a valet parker, and the valet, he would, um, a valet parker? I think they're just called valets, aren't they? Anyway, the valet guy, um, they had him because they were all pr parking on these people's lawns, so they wanted the cars organized a certain way. They had a lot of people coming, so I let that guy park my car. But in general, I don't let people drive my car. It's, you know, it's not even about, you know, paying someone to park my car when I can myself, which is a little silly. But I don't understand why people let somebody, especially somebody they don't know, drive their car. I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with friends driving my car unless I, I have to let them, you know? Um, why do I bring that up here? Uh, because it's kind of the same thing with computers. Uh, I have known people who have fallen victim to those scams where you get little pop-ups because uh, you clicked on a link and it's like, oh, your computer's infected by a virus and uh, call this number and then they give those people remote access to their computers and it just blows my mind I would not let anybody I don't know it's like how can you trust somebody you don't know to access your computer I, I again wouldn't let most people I know sit down and use my computer without me looking over their shoulder because it's my computer let alone let somebody who's probably in another country that I have no way of gaining access to them if they were to do something malicious and, but people do this, and I just don't get it. But for me, it's the same thing with the valet parking. You're going to let somebody, one of the most expensive things I own, my car. You know, next to my house, it's the most expensive thing I own. And I'm going to give it to, to somebody I don't know to drive around? Have, have you never seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? <laughs> I, and, you know, with my, with my new car, the key fob itself, when I bought the car, it only came with one key fob. It's one of those keyless entries, which is really a beautiful thing you know you think oh it's you know how hard is it to take your keys out you know and click a button to unlock it we don't even have to put our keys anymore no i don't even need to take my keys out of my pocket to open the door or start the engine especially when you have kids it's really really nice kind of going off topic again but it's amazing how used you get to simple little things like that but it only came with one key fob so i had to get a second key fob and hire someone to program it uh the the guy at the dealership said don't have us do it it will cost you almost 300 bucks he told me, go on Amazon, find the right key, make sure it's the right key, order it, and then find a locksmith who can program it. And, uh, and I did that. And I want to say the key fob was maybe $75. And then I think it was another $75 or something like that. The, the guy did come out to my, to my house. He cut the key for me, which I didn't even, wasn't even expecting, so I have a second key. Because um, there is an emergency key. It's a keyless car, but it has an emergency key in case the battery's dead. You can unlock that. He cut that for me and programmed the, uh, the key for me. And um, I looked into that before I bought, uh, before I, I hired someone to do it. I'm like, can I get software and somehow program this? Can I buy? It? I mean, if it's going to cost me 200 bucks to do this, can I buy a piece of hardware and program it myself? It turns out, you really can't at this time because it's so proprietary, and even talking to the locksmith. So he has this little computer device that he can program the keys with, but he has to buy security certificates for each key he programs. And I think he pays like, I, I forget, it was, a, it was about a year ago, uh, but I want to say he pays like 10 or 20 bucks per security key, uh, security certificate. And it took him two tries. For some reason, my key didn't program the first time. He had to go through two of the certificates. The little machine has a countdown. And when he runs out, he's got to order more, and they load more certificates on there for him. So even if you have the hardware to program your key, you got to buy certificates for it, which is ridiculous. And, of course, it's one of those, it's about security, when it's really not about security. Because, obviously, I could put certificates on my key and have them be secure without having to buy certificates from somebody. Um, it's all about making that extra buck. Um, but going back to that, it's like this, this key fob, Plus programming it costs 200 bucks. I don't feel comfortable just giving my key fob to somebody I don't know. 
let alone the fact that my house key's on there. I also have a little flash drive on there. Obviously, I can take that off and just give him the key fob, but it's a $200 key fob for my car. And, and I just don't feel comfortable uh, letting someone else drive my car. I bring this up because I had to meet somebody at a restaurant today, and the restaurant had valet parking only. I was like, valet parking only? I literally pull in their parking lot, and there's three empty spots right next to me. And I go, can I just park right there? No, nope, valet parking only. I'm like, okay, I'll go park somewhere else. And I drove down the block where there's beach parking, drove around there for five minutes until a spot opened up and paid for parking over there and then walked back because I'm just not letting someone else drive my car. And again, it's the same as my computer. So that's, that's the rule of thumb is <clears throat> if you don't know and trust somebody, why would you let them use your computer? You know, why would you let them? Your computer carries all your information. I mean, most people have, you know, their passwords saved for their email so they don't have to type it in when they log in. So, and once you have access to someone's email, it's like, that's, that's how you reset accounts. You have access to pretty much all their other accounts if you have access to their computer. I actually SSH into a server to check my email. So if someone did get my computer, they would still need my uh, passphrase for my security key to log into my SSH server to check my email. Uh, but there's still, I still, you know, have a lot of my personal stuff on my computer. So why would I give somebody, I don't know, access to that. And they, I mean, even if though they, they have that, they could leave something on there, a key logger or something that remotely sends stuff back. Why would you let anybody you don't know access your computer? Why would you let anybody you don't know drive your car? And it just blows my mind. I just don't understand the thought process behind that. But people do it all the time. Uh, where I live, there's valet parking everywhere. You know, like I said, usually it's an option. It's not a requirement. And I just don't get it. You know, I guess it just makes you feel rich and fancy to be able to, you know, pay somebody to drive your car 10 feet and park it for you because you can't, because you, for some reason, don't want to do it yourself even though you can. Um, but yeah, uh, computer security, a lot of it is about trust. And people hire people from Geek Squad or wherever, you know, that they don't know to work on their computers and I just don't see the trust there. And I mean, and you can, you can search, you know, online, find videos of the undercover people uh, watching these tech guys who come to people's houses to work on their computers and the malicious stuff they do. Sometimes they install stuff they shouldn't. And sometimes they just flat out lie so they can charge for other stuff. And I'm not even saying that the majority of computer uh, repair people, wherever you want to call them, are like that. Uh, but a good percentage of them are. And you don't know if you don't know the person. And really, I, I, I actually do think that most of them are scam artists. Um, <laughs> but because they're always trying to sell you software. They're always trying to sell you some antivirus software. If you've watched my channel, you know my views on antivirus software. And that's a complete scam. It's just ridiculous. A scam started by McAfee, who's a nut job, to make other people paranoid so they'd buy his software. And... 30 years later, people are still doing it. I mean, not that he's involved with the McAfee software anymore, but people, I, and I see, I see YouTube channels talking about it, like half five. I mean, they talk about uh, installing antivirus. So it's like, really? You're going to suggest that? How about just securing your computer? Antivirus is for, oh, I really don't, I'm not going to secure my computer, so hopefully this thing will alert me if something happens. Anyway, those are my random thoughts of the day on giving random people access to your valuable things such as your computers and cars it's kind of like another example of this <clears throat> you have a coupon on your phone and you show it to somebody and they're like oh can i see your phone that happened to me once like back when f smartphones first came out like 10 years ago you know i'm at a restaurant here here i got this coupon and the server went oh, oh let me see and then they turned and went back behind the register with my phone i'm like oh, i wasn't expecting them to do that and now it's just like no, you can't. You can't hold my phone. Look, just just write down the number from the from the coupon. It's like, no, I'm not going to hand you my phone. It literally takes five seconds, especially if my phone's unlocked, for you to plug in something into the USB, and now you own my phone. People, people, if you don't personally know somebody, don't trust them. And if you do personally know them, still don't trust them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.